Today we have got the brand new Klipsch R800F, and any time a new version of a speaker comes out, the question on most people's minds is, should I upgrade? Now I haven't heard the 820F, but I suspect by the end of this video, that isn't going to matter. Before we get started, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that you can take and learn at your own pace. And I am always looking for ways to up the quality of our videos. So when I discovered a class on Skillshare by the one and only MKBHD, I knew I had to take it. With nearly 16 million subscribers, Marquez Brownlee knows a thing or two about YouTube and tech, and it is easy to follow class entitled YouTube Success. I learned techniques that have helped increase engagement by almost 30%. But Skillshare is so much more than YouTube tips and tricks. There are classes on interior design, photography, coding, even gardening. Yeah, gardening. If there is a skill you would like to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. And the best part is you can learn on your own time. The first 1,000 viewers to sign up through my link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now, back to it. The new Klipsch R800F tower speaker is a more mature and far more upscale looking speaker than its predecessor. It loses the exposed hardware and that smaller horn waveguide of the R820F, making for a way more coherent design and potentially making it a lustworthy budget speaker. And while the 800F may have gotten a new, larger Track Tricks horn, updated woofers that trickled down from Klipsch's reference Premier line, as well as better Atmos speaker connectors. The new speaker on the whole, in terms of its specifications, remains largely the same as its predecessor. Getting right down to it, when we first set these up in our room, I hate to say it, they, they did not sound good. After about a half a dozen tracks, ranging from the piano stylings of Luna to Korn's Follow the Leader, the word I jotted down in my notes that I felt best summed up the 800F was chesty. The bass was deep, but it lacked control. It was blurry and it sounded hollow. Knocking around on the 800F's cabinet revealed a lot of internal resonance, which can affect a speaker's overall sound. And this boomy bass completely overshadowed the mid-range, which brings me to its treble performance. While not outwardly aggressive, the treble doesn't appear to roll off until well after 10 kilohertz, giving the highs more of a presence. Now, this presence should have lent the speaker a greater level of intelligibility, but it didn't. If its lack of roll-off showcased anything, it was sibilance, as the 800F proved awfully spitty. I took several in-room measurements of the 800Fs and was completely shocked. Not because the results were terrible, but because they weren't. Sure, I could see the bass boost clear as day, the slight mid-range dip, and the lack of roll-off in the tweeter, but all things considered, the 800's in-room frequency response wasn't all that bad. So what the hell was going on? The real culprit really is the cabinet. From the low mid-range to the base, there's just a lot of audible resonance in and around that cabinet, resulting in that chesty sound I mentioned earlier. There's also quite a bit of distortion present in the low bass. Add these two things together and you end up with a rather unfocused sound down low. Inject a bit of boost on top of it and it doesn't take measurement tools to realize that this speaker is let down mostly by its build quality, despite visually looking pretty well made for such a budget-oriented speaker. Now, some boost in the bass isn't out of character for a budget speaker like this, so I'm not holding anything against Klipsch for juicing things up a bit and adding some character to this speaker's sound. If I were a betting man, my money is on customer feedback, not to mention sales, showing Klipsch that this is what consumers want. But ultimately, for me anyway, the lack of control in detail down low really spoiled the 800F's other positive attributes. It was only when I used our Onkyo RZ50 to cut the speaker's bass off at the proverbial knees that my opinion of the 800F improved. Sending everything below roughly 100 hertz to the Klipsch SPL120 subwoofer produced more positive results with respect to the speaker's overall clarity. Yes, the speaker was still a bit spitty up top, but tonally, instruments and artists no longer sounded as if they were stuffed with blankets or singing through pillows. Soundstage focus and dynamics also improve. The 800F soundstage, when not bogged down by their bass and construction concerns, are capable of casting a pretty vast wall of sound that easily exceeds the boundaries of the speakers themselves. 
Detail and center focus are good. Definitely better with a bit of toe-in, but by no means are they laser etched. So you're left with a sort of mid-hall, or call it several rows back of stage type of soundstage presentation, where instruments and vocals start to coalesce rather than possess that control room-like precision. And I'm okay with that. Frankly, it's common for a budget speaker like this one. But as you start to go off axis, things really do deteriorate. While I expected the 800F to excel dynamically, and in some ways it does, when left to its own devices, in other words, when not routing all of the bass to a sub, the dynamics are bold but also blunt, lacking any sonic contrast. Now, if you are all about explosions, shattered glass, and bullet ricochets, this speaker is going to excite. But if you're hoping for a bit of nuance or subtlety, not so much. The 800F is decidedly bass forward, bold, and punchy that at times this speaker can even be a little bit spicy. So what is one to do? Should consumers abandon ship with respect to Klipsch's new reference line? Look, if you are all about rocking out and are less concerned with things like subtlety, by all means, give the 800F a whirl. You may end up being pretty happy with your purchase. Now, home theater enthusiasts may also want to give the 800Fs the walk around the block because with a bit of room correction, either in the form of Dirac or Odyssey, it is possible to wring a little bit of finesse out of these tower speakers. The new reference R30C Center, seen in this video though, it's all upper mid-range and treble. It's tonally more forward and piercing compared to the 800Fs, and not even room correction can really save it. More surprising, the center's complete lack of bass didn't help it to be more intelligible when it came to dialogue, which was kind of weird to me. So I would skip that speaker. As far as what I would do, I would skip all of the reference towers and instead go for the R50M. The R50M is simply a better, more well-balanced speaker that, while not perfect and not without its own cabinet colorations, it is far more accurate in direct comparison to the 800F. They 100% will require a subwoofer for any and all bass below 90 hertz, and I would recommend stuffing their port to cut down on the small amount of resonance that can be heard at higher volumes. But from the mid-range on up, they're pretty similar to the 800Fs, if not just a little bit more neutral and better dampened, resulting in a more focused sound for both music and movies. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of folks walk away from a demo of the R50Ms pleasantly surprised. I, I know I was after purchasing a pair at retail to keep this review from being a complete waste of time. Other alternatives, but staying within the Klipsch family, at a little over $800 a pair, the new 600M Mark IIs are a much better buy. The 800Fs play a little lower than Klipsch's new RP 600M Mark IIs, but you'll get a more refined sound and appreciate the low notes more with the 600Ms. From the mid-range to the treble, again, the new 600s, they're superior. I'd also consider the original RP 8000Fs, which are so deeply discounted at this point that they may be the best overall option if you're wanting to stay in the Klipsch family and enjoy that brand trademark sound. Aside from Klipsch, in direct head-to-head, -head, the JBL Stage 190 tower speaker gets my pick. It's definitely more poised in the bass department, despite both speakers having a bit of a bass bump. Moreover, the stage is just more intelligible through the mid-range, and while it can also come across as bright with certain recordings, its brightness is more predictable, possessing less distortion, making the JBL easier to adjust to taste using simple tone controls. While I may prefer the slightly smaller stature and look of the 800 F to that of the JBL, it is the 190 sound that wins out for me in this head-to-head. -head. Other notable tower options include the smaller Polk Reserve Towers, Wharfdale Diamond Series, and the Q Acoustics 3050, all of which are comparable to the 800 Fs in terms of price, but give you better performance. So that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on the new R800F speakers from Klipsch. They wouldn't be my first or even second choice when shopping at this price point. Instead, I recommend that you save yourself some money and space by going with the smaller and cheaper R50Ms with a subwoofer, but that's, that's just me. In the end, the only one who has to like the sound of any speaker is you. So by all means, seek out an audition of the 800Fs for yourself. Just, just know that they are an option in an ocean of options. So that's my review of Klipsch's new R800F tower speaker, but I am curious, what do you think of them? <laughs> you sure about that? <laughs> uh, I, boy, I'm afraid that the positives for me begin and end with the design. Yeah. Um, it looks great, mm -hmm. and it looks like it would sound great, mm -hmm. it just doesn't. Yeah. I mean, 
I think that you and I are in almost 100% agreement about this speaker. The only thing that we're not in total alignment on is that you can save the speaker by using something like Dirac. Really? Does it improve the speaker and at least make it listenable? Yes, but okay. the problems do not disappear enough, at least for me, to justify keeping them. Okay. Um, the only other thing that I disagree with you on slightly mm -hmm. is their lack of intelligibility. I did find them super easy to understand in terms of like, like actor dialogue or whatever when we were watching TV or movies. Mm -hmm. I just didn't sound good. It was, like you said, it was so sibilant and spitty mm -hmm. that it just, it, it just ruined it. Um, okay. But I didn't have any trouble understanding what they were saying. Hmm. So for me, the intelligibility, intelligibility was fine. Mm -hmm. It just, it isn't the kind of intelligibility that you want to hear. Okay. Um, hands down, I would buy the 600 Mark IIs over these. The new ones, yeah. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's where I would start. Okay. Those speakers are really, 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 really good. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the 50Ms, is that what they're called? The yeah, little the ones? Yeah, the R50Ms, little yeah. ones. Yeah. I think they're better. They're, yeah. they're a lot better than the 800Fs. And I mean, you, you're basically getting rid of the base issues. Yeah, completely. <laughs> you know, cause just, it's not there. Just get rid of the woofers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but they still have that grainy sound. Up top. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that they're characteristically, uh, in terms of that graininess or maybe a, the treble not being as refined, like you said, for 250 or $300 a pair, they're somewhere in there. It really depends when you see this review and what Clips is choosing to charge. Um, they're very much in line with speakers at that price point. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would much rather have the 50s in my system than, mm -hmm. than the 800 Fs any day. Yeah. Um, I think, Especially if I was on a really tight budget, you could go, you could get a really nice, um, home theater surround sound system set up using the, uh, the fifties. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. I think I priced one out. I think for just under 2,500 bucks, you could end up with five fifty M's and like the Marantz 1711 and a SVS 3000 micro subwoofer for like 2438 I think it came out to be which would be a pretty Well you could even use the the clip sub and be you could save about save 100 a little, bucks a yeah yeah and save about 100 bucks and you have a pretty slamming system I'm not going to lie Yeah I mean when we used it when we used the 50s and ran them with our in ceiling clip speakers mm -hmm. it was it was a you know it was a nice experience yeah. i i didn't hate it or anything like that yeah, you mean, know it wasn't bad and again for we're talking like an ultra budget setup i think yeah. that's a really a really solid option yeah. um i just i don't see the point personally in in auditioning the 800 f's i I think they, they look good, but that's really about it. Okay. Um, I was actually pretty shocked at, I hate to say it, how bad they were. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I like, I like Klipsch. I mean, you know? everyone that watches this channel knows that we typically, we typically like their products, but yeah, I'm with you. This one, this one was rough. And especially when, I mean, I don't really care much about measurements, but the fact that they measured so, you know, they didn't measure how you really anticipated them to measure based how they sounded. Yeah. Um, which was a surprise. But anyway, I, I just, yeah. I, They're I, really a great example of how, uh, not necessarily how measurements don't always add up to, uh, the listening experience, but how sometimes frequency response doesn't tell the whole story. They're really shockingly linear to the point where I'm sure some of you saw the graph in this video and were like, that looks really good. Um, but when I went to um, other types of measurements, measurements that, uh, you know, kind of show the energy that is in and around the cabinet. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, this thing is not inert and it's all that resonance in around that port in those bottom drivers that that's what's killing this speaker. It really is. But I'm, I'm still not recommending that maybe you go get these, take the drivers out and just stuff a bunch of dampening material in the cabinet because I think for around 800 bucks, you can just get a better constructed speaker from jump. 
Right, rather than trying to rather than Frankenstein, trying, yeah, Frankenstein something, something brand new. Yeah, yeah, I still don't quite don't get, void your warranty. Yeah, don't do any of that stuff. I mean, you could go Polk Reserve at a at or around this price. You can go Q Acoustic thirty fifty for less than these, and you will get a demonstrably better speaker. I still think the JBL Stage one nineties are killer value, and I, I would. I uh, hate. What, I have to agree with you one hundred percent. If I absolutely was determined to get a tower speaker and yeah. this was, you know, about my budget. Yeah. I would get the the JBLs. Yeah, the Stage 190s, I don't like how massive they are. I I, I cannot stress to you how perfectly proportioned I believe. I believe the 800Fs are for a tower speaker. They're not too big, they're not too deep, but they're also not kind of toy like. The eight, uh, I'm sorry, the 190s from JBL they're big, they are imposing, but they, I just don't. They I, are the bigger, they are you, the better I, speaker. You've been saying that uh, all week, and I'm like, I, I don't. I feel like we're looking at two different speakers. They like, are I, marginally, and we have them, yeah, both sitting, or we did at one point. We yeah. have them both sitting side by side, and I, guys, from my perspective, I don't see a vast difference in the tower like as far as size wise size or imposing or whatever uh you want to call it i don't <laughs> i don't see this gulf of difference that andrew does um as far as when you're looking at the clips versus the jbl maybe when i'm watching back the b-roll and the video i'll be like oh, okay i see what he's saying but i'll um, put it this in way in person i don't <laughs> i do not think that there's i wouldn't let that be the determining factor no i wouldn't let it be the determining factor but i would like people to understand that maybe if you haven't seen the jbl stage 190 towers because there is a smaller tower but if you haven't seen the 190 it is closer in in shape and size to the polk r700 whereas the 800 f is closer in shape and size to something like and these two speakers are not comparable. I'm using it as a size reference. Is more comparable in size to say the Sonus Faber Lumina fives. I don't see it, but I will agree with you though. The the one nineties are the better speaker, and they have, in terms of frequency response in our room, they have a very, very similar response. A little bit of bass hump, little dip, not as much, but a little dip in that mid range, and then the treble is almost like ruler flat but in terms of resonance that cabinet is while not completely inert way more inert and that matters it just does if you had to guess would you get the jbl bookshelves over the 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 new klipsch 50s if i had to guess i we would haven't, we haven't we haven't heard them and and i kind of want to hear them now the JBL bookshelves, the, I think they're the stage one thirties. Um, yeah, I think this, I think the JBL stage one thirties would probably perform just a little bit, a little bit better than the R fifties. And if I'm not mistaken, and again, this could be sale price talk. Um, I believe the one thirties are cheaper. I think the one thirties are currently $130 a pair right now. 130 to 150. I mean, they're cheaper than the damn Sonys that y'all seem to love. Yeah. Okay. That was going to be my last question. <laughs> <laughs> are these worse than the Sony? Are the, are the clips? Yeah. Worse than the Sony? Or about the same? I, I can tell you in terms of build quality and I can tell you in terms of build quality, I'd rather have the clips, uh, in the looks department, rather have the clips. If you plug the port, of the Klipsch, the R50M. If you plug the port, um, I think they do sound a little bit better, but I would not be surprised if it's kind of a wash. So that's it. That is now our review of Klipsch's new reference R800F tower speakers. What do you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. No question of the day today. I really just want to know what you think of these speakers. Uh, if you like this video, though, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, you leave us a thanks or you become a member of this channel. Know that all of those ways are great ways that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very much for doing that. Speaking of thanks, thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. 
video, remember, click that link down below for a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring. And that's it. That's it for us today. So remember, uh, oh, wait, real quick, follow me on Instagram, Recovering Audio File. And that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And well, Christy and I are going on a bit of a vacation, so we probably won't see you for a little over a week. So in the meantime, take care of yourselves, be kind, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.